Dave again with an IB question here from topic 9.2. We're looking at single slit diffraction. Uh, we have plane wave fronts of monochromatic light with a wavelength lambda, and they're incident on a rectangular slit with width b. After passing through the slit, the light is brought into focus on a screen, which is a distance d away from the slit, and the width of the slit is comparable to the wavelength of the incident light. That's important because it tells us that we're going to get diffraction. Uh, B is much, much less than D, and that's important because it's going to allow us to use things like uh, the small angle approximation. And the point P on the screen is opposite the center of the slit. The graph below shows the variation with the angle theta. Uh, theta is this angle here of the intensity of the light on the screen, and we see an interference pattern. We want to explain qualitatively this intensity distribution. Well, I got this question wrong the first time because I didn't read the command terms correctly. Uh, I described the uh, 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 diffraction pattern, but the command term is explain, and they want, that basically means explain how the intensity distribution is formed. Uh, so to answer that question, we can say that uh, Huygens' principle tells us that the light from all parts of the slit uh, generate their own waves. So these waves each arrive uh, at different parts of the screen uh, with different paths, with different path lengths. Therefore, they're, uh, therefore they're, uh, they're going to be out of phase. Uh, where the phase difference is uh, half a wavelength out of phase, you'll get destructive interference. Uh, Constructive interference occurs where the phase difference is a whole wavelength. Um, that's a bit vague. Right. Something like that. Uh, that's probably a little more detailed than they want because they did only ask for uh, three marks. Um, but I think that's the whole story. Um, now, we're told about the angle, when the angle theta is equal to the angle phi, that's the angular half width of the central maximum of the intensity distribution. And we're told that we can calculate the angle phi by dividing the wavelength by the width of the slit. We want to derive an expression in terms of d, lambda, and b for the half width of the central maximum uh, d. So let's come over to the side and uh, well, let's go up to the top here and we'll draw in some information into this diagram. Um, that is d here and this is that half width that they were talking about of the central maximum. So if we draw the maximum on top it might look something like this. And so d is half the width of this central maximum. There's a relationship between big D, little d, and theta. The tangent of theta is equal to little d on big D. Now we want to relate that to lambda and to uh, b. So we'll also come into this space. And we'll draw, using Huygens' principle, the ray coming from the top of the slit that also goes to the uh, to that point of um, 
to that minimum. We'll draw in this little perpendicular. So we're getting really small there, so maybe we'll zoom in. This length is half of B. And this length is the path difference between the two rays that arrive here. And we know because this point is a minimum, we know that that path difference has to be half a wavelength. We also know, uh, using a little bit of geometry, that this angle is the same angle uh, as this one, theta. So that allows us to say that the sine of theta is opposite over hypotenuse lambda on 2 divided by b on 2. So let's take that and we're going to use it to answer uh, this question. Now using the small angle approximation we're allowed to do that because d is much much greater than b so theta is going to be very very small. When theta is very very small tangent of theta is approximately equal to theta and sine of theta is approximately equal to theta. At the same time lambda on 2 divided by b on 2 is just lambda on b and here we have little d on big D and they're each equal to theta. So combining those two together we get little d on big D equals lambda on b or since we want an equation for d, we'll just rearrange that to uh, little d equals big D lambda on b. The last part says that the single slit is now replaced with two rectangular slits, each with a width of b. The distance between the center of the slits is 2b. Uh, we want to draw on this axis a sketch of the intensity distribution now, in the dashed lines, we have the old intensity distribution when we had just one slit. So coming over to the side, we have a little gap. Those are our two slits, which are a distance of 2b apart. And here's our screen. That's straight out to the screen, where we can expect a central bright spot, because this spot is equidistant from both gaps. And we want to find where the first minimum is going to occur. Well, that's going to come from the path difference, just like before. And at the first minimum, that path difference is the same lambda on 2. So we get to say again that sine of theta equals lambda on 2, but this time the separation between those points that are canceling is not b on 2, but 2b. Small angle approximation still applies, and so we get to say that that angle to the first minimum is 1 quarter of lambda on b, as opposed to just lambda, lambda on b like it was before. That's telling us that the first minimum is going to be 1 quarter of the way out to where the first minimum used to be. So coming over here, the first minimum used to be right here, so now it's going to be about here, one quarter of the way out. So redrawing the frequency distribution, we see that the peak and the troughs occur much more frequently. When we draw these diagrams, we want to make sure that we bring the minimum all the way down to the x-axis, showing total destructive interference. We should get something that looks kind of like that. Um, maybe try drawing this diagram in pencil uh, and not on a computer screen. I'm hoping you can get a smoother curve than I was able to.